Hill. CP the franchise. Knicks fan TV, because every time we try to have him on, there's some problem. I'm starting to think that CP stands for can't pay. Did you? <laughs> did, well, okay, all the buzz, right? They've won seven in a row. I Woo. see that, CP. The Knicks are on a winning yeah. streak. Yeah, sure. the orange and blue, the number one story in the NBA. Yeah. Once again, Max Kellerman, seven in a row. They are red hot. You got Julius Randle, mm -hmm. the Eastern Conference Player of the Week, averaging 35 points, eight rebounds, mm -hmm. and six assists last week after dominating your Lakers, dominating your Lord and Savior, Kristaps Porzingis, and dominating Zion Williamson and the Pelicans twice. We are a half game behind the Hawks for fourth place. Hawks coming in tonight to be lunch meat for eight in a row, and the New York Knicks are buzzing. We are clicking right now. I see you're very – I must be great to be a Knicks fan, CP. Once every 10 to 15 years, you can brag about maybe being a top four playoff seed. It's great. All right, listen, it's good to see you. And by the way, CP, you are a person of color. You are on the show today, and even if you – whatever, you could be a white guy, but people – have feelings about the verdict sure. from yesterday. So if you are interested in making a comment, I want to give you the space to do it. If not, if you're like, look, I've said what I had to say. People have said what they have to say. I want to talk sports. I'll leave it up to yep. you. I don't mean to like blindside you with it, but it occurs to me, maybe you'd like to say something about it before we get into basketball. Hey, yeah, he's real. And, and listen, I am a black man in America. I'm a black father raising a black son in America. So yesterday's verdict weighed heavy on my mind. Um, I have to agree with a lot of the sentiment, like, like Michael Wilbon said, I, I don't necessarily see it as a complete victory for, for social justice and the criminal justice system. It, it's a small victory for the family. We'll never be able to get George Floyd back, but it's a small victory for them. I think for us, you know, we have a lot of work to do. The beauty about our platforms is that it brings us together as a community. I just wish that us as a society would bring that same energy, that same vigor that we bring to supporting our teams in supporting other races, other cultures to ensure that we not only have, you know, legal justice, but economic justice, education, housing, medical, all across the board. You know, we want equality and want, we, we want fairness for all, no doubt about it. That's well said, CP. Let's talk some basketball. Um, I know you'd love to talk about the Knicks, but this is going out to the whole country. So let's talk about a story that people care about. The Brooklyn Nets. Um, James Harden. Dude, they're talking about he could be, he's out indefinitely. They can't put a timetable on it. What are your thoughts about what the Nets are you know facing? What? Right it's now? tough. These guys have to bounce back and, and get healthy so that they can gain some sort of chemistry before the playoffs come uh, come around. You know, Steve Nash is now saying that James Harden may not even be back until that time. You already have Kevin Durant out day to day with the thigh contusion. Kyrie Irving, though, has been holding it down. You know, the one thing I talk about with this Nets team that you have to like is that they have three absolute bucket getters. The Nets lead the league right now with 24 clutch wins. They define clutch as the game being within five points uh, under five minutes to go. So the thing about the Nets is that they're the number one team in isolation. They have three bucket getters. When the game slows down in the half court in the playoffs, you're going to rely on those guys to go out and do what they do best, which is score at all three levels. So offensively, I think they'll be fine. Now on the defense, they'll have to figure out where they want to go and make sure that they get guys healthy. You know, Embiid is going to want to bang. Giannis is going to want to bang. Who are the Nets going to have to cover those guys? Can they hold up during that grind that is the NBA playoffs? I think that's the bigger question to me. There's three teams since the NBA and ABA merger that have won the NBA championship with a defensive ranking below 10. That's the 95 Rockets, the 2001 Lakers with Shaq and Kobe, and then the 2017 Golden State Warriors. I still think the Nets could be that fourth team, but they got to get healthy and come back together quickly. I, I think that's good analysis. I would say that they can't do anything with Embiid. Like, they have some bodies yeah. they could throw at him, Blake and, and, and Claxton and DeAndre, but he's yeah. going to get his. It's just that when he gets three, it's three the hard way, and the Nets, meantime, are going to be bombing for everywhere. I agree with you. I think if they're healthy, they'll be the fourth on the list you mentioned, talking to CP, the franchise, Knicks fan TV. Um, CP, my uh, inter like kind of view of what LeBron does every year is at a certain point in his career, I think – post Pat Riley he was like I can't keep the pedal to the metal both ends of the floor all year 
Someone else could have it in the regular season. Here, KD, there's the MVP. And KD deserved it. It's not like Jordan. They used to give it to Malone and Barkley. Jordan was so much better than them, even in the regular season. It was embarrassing. But KD genuinely was. Steph genuinely was hard to, better than LeBron in the regular season. Then LeBron uses the playoffs that by the end of the playoffs, we go, oh, yeah, yeah, no, he's the best. But he has to keep proving that every year. He's another year older. Harden and all these guys are playing amazing with it. Is he still the best player in the world? Does he have to be? Not just an MVP level guy, but the best player in the world for the Lakers to get out of the West. Playing the world for the Lakers to get out of the West because you still have Anthony Davis. Now, Anthony Davis is supposed to be coming back this week. That should take a lot of the load off of LeBron. He had an outstanding NBA Finals and NBA playoff run last year. That being said, LeBron is still at the top of the top. So when it comes to being the best player in the league, I mean, 36 years old to see what he's been able to accomplish. Yes, he's down with the high ankle sprain now, but th there's no question that LeBron James is still at the top of his game. You know, when he comes back, the Lakers should be able to, you know, hopefully they get some chemistry and, and uh, you know, get things together. But, you know, he's still going to be the dynamo in terms of scoring points, getting these guys involved in terms of the passing game and playmaking. We're going to see what type of chemistry he develops with Andre Drummond. You know, Andre Drummond sets a lot of good screens. How does that get LeBron going downhill for him to attack the basket? So you still have to respect LeBron James's game. It's hard to count him out, but this is a Laker team just like the Nets that have to come together and get chemistry fast. Um, speaking of can't count him out and respecting his game, we got about 30 seconds, CP. Steph Curry has forced his way into the MVP conversation. Where do you have him in that in that race right now? Where would you rank him? You don't have to, he's not number one or yeah. two for me either, but he is on my list. I have him yeah. third right now. Where do you have him? Julius Randle. Number one, we, we got to factor wins into this thing, man. And as, as much as Steph is torching the Nets right now, especially from three, when do we put some respect on Nikola Jokic's name and give him the honors that that goes to the best player in the league? The guy's an absolute dynamo and a force for the Denver Nuggets. A second round pick went into this game against the Grizzlies, winning that game in double overtime, 47 points, 15 rebounds, eight assists. Nikola Jokic is an absolute genius. He's a maestro on the court. It's time to give him respect. Listen, Steph has won it twice already. And it's very hard to find objective criteria once you get to these guys that are at the top of the league. But I got to factor in winning as well. You know, the Warriors are a bad team with Steph. They're a bad team without Steph. So Jokic is number one. Number two, how about Chris Paul? You know, the Phoenix Suns now at second in the West after not making the playoffs last year. Chris Paul now on his way to 11 straight winning seasons. I put him up there with LeBron James as not only a superstar, but an absolute team changer. Meaning when he gets to a team, he automatically improves their winning percentage. Look what he did with the OKC Thunder last year. And at his age, I think Chris Paul should also be in consideration. So great season by Steph, no doubt about it. Best shooter of all time. But he's won the MVP twice already. And I got to factor in wins when I'm considering the MVP. Julius Randle, close third. Not to mention Damian, not to, not to mention Damian Lillard. CP, the franchise, yep. ladies and gentlemen. All right, CP, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Thanks for coming on.